best day skating ever. The day before I ended up, two days before I ended up hospitalized. And I was skating in, in half of the condition that I was in when I ended up in the hospital. What up y'all, Matt Burke here again. Coming in from my house here in Tallahassee, Florida, and today, instead of going out and skating, I just wanted to let you guys know what happened to me last week, what put me in the hospital, what kept me in the hospital, and what I've got looking forward to now that I am no longer in the hospital. But with all of that said, there is gonna be a t-shirt design that I'm gonna be unveiling at some point during this video. And the reason for that t-shirt design is because it is going to be up for sale to not only help me pay for the hospital visit that I just had to go through, but also to help me pay for all of my upcoming doctor visits, my GI visits, and just basically the fact that I was out of work for two weeks. So I do have this shirt that is gonna be coming out. It does have a lot to do with this channel. It is something that y'all have heard me say a million times at the end of every single video that I have ever made on this channel. But before I get into that t-shirt and all of that, let me just tell you about what put me in the hospital and what's going on. So as y'all know, as it says on my t-shirt, as I make it known in every single one of my videos, I'm from Tallahassee, Florida, the North Florida area, and we deal with some of the most intense heat and humidity that I have ever felt in my entire life. And our summer season starts here long before it does in a majority of the rest of the country. So I don't know if it was just something where I wasn't paying attention to how hot it was, or I just didn't really take into account how much sweat and how much liquid my body was draining out of it during my skate sessions. So last week I went out five days in a row two to three hours every single day, 95 degree heat, 90 plus percent humidity, and I skated the hardest that I think that I've ever skated since I got back into skating a few years ago. And so that left me in a state of absolute severe dehydration that I've never felt in my life before. But since it's something that I've never dealt with before, whether severe dehydration or any type of real dehydration at all, I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea why my body was feeling the way that it was. After about three or four days of me being in some of the most excruciating and uncomfortable pain that I've ever been in my entire life, my girlfriend had gotten to the point where she was borderline begging me to go to one of the clinics here in town or even to take it to the extreme and go to the emergency emergency room, both of which I was incredibly stubborn about and just did not think was an actual reality that needed to be realized. Unfortunately, as things seemed to play out more often than not, my girlfriend was correct in the things that she was saying and I really did need to find myself at a doctor. So after a couple days of just really, really being uncomfortable, thinking that it was just, you know, some sort of a gastrointestinal thing. I ended up on the toilet last Friday night and I was screaming and yelling and groaning and pretty much making noises that I don't think have ever come out of my body before. And honestly, I hope that they never do again. But after about 20 minutes of my girlfriend hearing that and seeing the position that I was in, it was really a no brainer that 911 needed to be called, an ambulance needed to be brought out, and I absolutely 100% needed to be rushed to the hospital, and I needed medical care as soon as humanly possible. I should have gone to the doctor long before I did, and me being stubborn and me waiting as long as I did is something that did cause the furthest outcome of what did happen. Now, looking back, hindsight being what it is, I believe that I was pretty concerned that I was gonna have to have an emergency surgery. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what my issue was, but I was pretty convinced that surgery was gonna need to happen just because of the pain that I was feeling. So after being pumped full of all sorts of antibiotics, all sorts of fluids, they hit me with morphine and a whole bunch of other different painkillers and things that I'm not even sure of what was pumping through my body. They ended up dragging me along to a CAT scan, a CT scan, something that I have never dealt with in my entire life. As they were putting me into the CAT scan, I vomited all over the place, something that I wasn't sure could even happen because I hadn't ingested any food or liquids into my body for about two days at that point, solely due to the amount of pain that I had been leading up to that point. 
And so at this CT scan, they had me in there. It was the most uncomfortable experience of my life. I am a bit claustrophobic. So adding that to the immense pain that I was in, it was a very difficult situation for me to be involved in both mentally and physically. It came back that I had an abdominal disease known as diverticulitis. And what diverticulitis is in the most layman's terms is pretty much I ended up with there being so much food compacted in my intestines and in my colon that there are little pouches, little bubbles that start to protrude out of the intestine and food falls into those bubbles and into those pouches. It ends up getting stuck in there. That food ends up basically fermenting inside of those little bubbles, which then ends up getting infected, which then ends up spreading that infection all through my intestines, all through my gallbladder, my kidneys, my liver, my stomach, everywhere that it could possibly have gone to it was going, the infection was spreading, and it was getting worse and worse while I was there. So during the time that I was in the hospital, they did have me set up to all sorts of IVs, again, with antibiotics, pain pills, and all sorts of fluids just to get my body back to being hydrated. So after spending about 12 hours in the hospital on Friday night through Saturday morning, they thought that everything would be okay with just being an outpatient and taking the antibiotics and taking the pain pills that they had given me. And by a couple days later, everything should have been fine and the infection should have worked itself out. But unfortunately, that was not the case. And come Monday, morning, I found myself yet again in even worse pain than I was in on Friday, and I did need to be brought back to the hospital and this time admitted. Again, I had never been to the emergency room. I have never been admitted to a hospital before, so I was freaking out. I was very, very nervous about what was going on. I had no idea what was about to happen, what I had to look forward to. But as soon as I got in there and as soon as they started hitting me with even more IVs, more liquid, different antibiotics, different pain killers just going directly into my bloodstream, I started to realize that maybe I had bit off a little bit more than I could chew and that I had put myself into a position that maybe I wouldn't be able to back myself out of as easily as maybe I was hoping to. And so after being admitted to the hospital, long story short, they had me hooked up to IVs for three and a half days that I was admitted to the hospital. I wasn't able to eat any kind of foods. I wasn't able to really hold any kind of liquids down. I wasn't able to get any sleep. So I was delirious for quite a while. While there were points where I was absolutely hallucinating. I didn't know what I was saying. I was having difficulty stringing sentences together. I couldn't stand up straight. I wasn't able to breathe because I was just convulsing and going into these really, really intense, deep breathing fits that kind of reminded me of a panic attack or an anxiety attack. And during all of the pain and mental anguish that I was going through, to have an anxiety attack or a breathing attack like that hit me, it was something that had me, I don't know where it had me, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, but throughout this whole experience, throughout everything that I had gone through in the hospital, I do have to bring up the fact that I think it was my heart rate that had me freaking out more than absolutely anything else. My heart rate was hovering somewhere between 26 and 29 beats per minute. It was something that not only had me really worried and also just had me feeling really, really woozy and weird, but my overnight nurse and all of the techs and nurses that were working underneath her, they had my vitals pulled up on the screen and they had all sorts of different materials and tools and all of that stuff completely ready to go just for the moment that they would find some sort of a situation where my heart rate dropped so low that I was unable to maintain and so the following morning after everything had gone wrong with my heart and when my doctor had told me that things were going wrong and that everyone on the floor was incredibly nervous about what they were seeing on my vitals, they brought up an endocardiogram or an echocardiogram, whichever one it is I'll have on the screen here. But I had a technician come up and he had what I believe was a $600,000 machine that he had hooked up to my chest in all of these different deals and ran a full on ultrasound of my entire heart, all of the valves that go into my heart. And he ran a full test on every single bit of my heart that this machine is capable of capturing. And I am incredibly happy to say that everything that came up with my heart 
could not have been better. My heart is pumping just the way that it needs to. It's pumping at a rhythm that was very comfortable for not only the echocardiograph guy, but also to the heart doctor that was at the hospital that did come and see me to tell me what his worries were and to tell me what I did need to do moving forward. But to be 37 years old, to be locked down on a hospital bed and to be having my entire heart ultrasounded is something that I never thought was gonna happen. It was a fear of mine pretty much for the last decade that my heart was gonna be something that gave out. I didn't think that my heart was as strong as it was. So I am incredibly thankful that I did need to go through what I went through to get all of these tests done on my body to make sure that everything that's in my body is working in the way that it is intended to work. And basically just getting the full on all okay from the doctor, from the surgeons, and from everybody else at the hospital that was looking over me and taking care of me and making sure that I was in fact okay. I don't really know all of the ins and outs of it. I don't know all of the intricate details of it because as you guys know, I am very, very far from being a doctor. All of this medical talk is not something that I'm at all comfortable with because it's not something that I am very knowledgeable on. So I am sitting here trying to not sound like an idiot while I am talking about what happened to me. But as someone that sits here and tells you at the end of every single video that I have ever made to take care of yourself and to stay safe out there, and I did not do everything that I could to take care of myself, what they ended up saying is that I ended up at the hospital because of severe hydration, which then compounded itself into acute diverticulitis, which is that disease that is something that is going to be a lifelong thing that I have to deal with if that diagnosis is correct. I won't be 100% sure if that diagnosis is correct until I get to these GI appointments, until I get a full colonoscopy, and until I get everything going and all of these tests done that need to be done on an outpatient basis that they just weren't doing on my inpatient stay. So with all of that said, I do have this t-shirt that is gonna be available for pre-order for the next week or two. And it's also gonna be available on shop rags for any of my fellow barbers, any tattoo artists, any mechanics out there, or just any of you that want a rag to bring to the skate park with you just to keep your bearings clean, clean up your skates, whatever you may need them for. And since this is something that came from me being dehydrated because I sweat so damn much while I am skating here in Tallahassee, I am I'm also gonna be offering up this sweat towel or this gym towel, whatever you wanna call it, with that same stay safe out there design as the t-shirt. Use it to sop up all your sweat, use it to clean stuff up, use it when you get out of the shower, if you go golfing, if you go to the beach, I don't care what you use it for, as long as you take the message that is printed on it with you and you always maintain taking care of yourself and always just maintain making sure that you're keeping yourself as safe as possible. So for anyone that made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for rocking with me. Everybody that sent me messages on Instagram, there were literally over 200 of you that sent me messages. So I do want you to know that I read every single one of the messages. I appreciate everybody that has reached out. I appreciate all of you for watching these videos, for caring about what I've got going on, for caring about where I was, what was, just thank you. Honestly, just thank you for everything, for being around, for sticking around for these two and a half years, for watching these videos, for sticking around with all the nonsense that I've been through, all of my ups and downs, the ins and outs, all of it. That being said, and y'all stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video.